Hello, hello everyone. It's Catherine, your health and life vitality mentor. Um, today, talking about stress. Who's been stressed a little bit lately? Moderately? Severely stressed? Um, as I'm recording this, we are still in, in, the, um, in the, the pandemic. Hey, Christine. Um, but it is June and we are seeing some level of improvement. But how are you feeling as we are, you know, several months into this? Um, the reason why I'm bringing this topic up today is, well, first, personally, I've been going through some pretty big roller coasters and I wanted to share some of the tools that um, has really helped me. And I've seen a lot of people dealing with stressful situations right now and um, uh, and not, not knowing what to do, right? So just let me know in the comments if you're watching live or in the replay, um, how would you evaluate the level of stress that you've been going through? Because I think most of us have been pretty stressed since March uh, with the COVID situation. So um, here's the thing. What is the meaning? So let's say if you're feeling some stress and it's a chronic, um, it's a chronically felt stress, meaning it's like low to moderate grade stress that, that is there kind of every day, most of the day. Um, most times, most people don't even feel that level of stress. They don't even feel that the, the reaction, the stress reaction is present but it's very subtle because stress kind of runs in the background. You know, like with your computer, when you got too many programs that run in the background and it really slows it down, it still works, but it really slows it down. Stress has a similar action and, thank you, <laughs> and, um, you know, runs in the background and eats up at your energy. Uh, what I've noticed with, when people are going through stressful times is, um, they might be feeling more tired, more irritable, more impatient, um, moods are up and down, some sadness, um, you know, could be anger, frustration, and um, not feeling like yourself, like, oh, this is not me, like, what's going on? Like, I know I had an episode like this, you know, this, outside of COVID, um, my sweetie and I, we were going through some pretty... Um, intense life transitions uh, to be together. He lives in California and I'm in Canada, so we've been apart for close to four months now, but that's on top of the rest that was going on. And I went through some pretty deep, intense emotions that I was just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> this is not me, like what's going on? And I've had to use my own coaching tools on myself to, you know, find relief from that. Um, but a lot of times when we're under stress and it's eating up energy and we're feeling fatigued, I see a lot of people, including myself, having some kind of self-judgment of like, well, what's going on? I shouldn't be feeling this way and, and kind of resisting uh, the signals that the body is sending, perhaps for more sleep, for more time to meditate or in nature or in quiet times sort of insights and reflection and um, or maybe, you know, say no more often to the zillion things that just want to add up to your calendar. Um, and a lot of people resist these, these signals because the meaning behind that is that, well, if I give in to this, uh, that means I'm weak. It means I'm not productive. It means um, I'm not as valuable as a person. And to some extent, I also went through that, you know, like it was very, um, <laughs> my sweetie and I, we call this states of viscosity. And that's from a good friend of mine, Beatrice, <laughs> She's, you know, when your mind and your thinking is viscous, it's like applying this principle of everything is viscous in life. You're trying to get somewhere, you're trying to do stuff and it doesn't, it just doesn't happen. So that viscosity creates kind of frustrations of expectations. This shouldn't be this way. It should be faster. Uh, you know, things should flow better. And these expectations, when they clash with the reality and you're not accepting what is, you're not accepting the reality, hey, Alain, um, it creates an internal stress of, of that dissonance. 
And without you knowing it, stress can eat up you know, your reserves, your energy. Stress definitely weakens the immune system. Um, you know, your hair can fall, losing some muscles. Um, so the personal uh, situation that I've been living since February, since even before COVID, uh, was uh, pretty intense. And it resolved last Monday, not this week, the week before. And I just went like, whoa, I feel like I need to exhale 100 gallons of air. <laughs> but here's the thing, when I started to notice that my body was sending me some signs of, hey, you're feeling fatigue and, and your mood is kind of up and down. And instead of making these meanings of, oh, I'm not a good person or I'm lazy or it means I'm weak, I decided to nap every afternoon, tired or not. And um, I have to tell you, it made a huge difference, huge difference in mood, in just my skin, stop losing hair, uh, regaining physical strength and stamina and energy. So this is kind of the point of my message today is when you're under stress, yeah, you can do a lot of things to cope with stress, you know, meditating, exercising, deep breathing, connecting with loved ones. <clears throat> All of that is great. And if your body is sending you signals that it's feeling tired, that it's not so optimal, I'd say stop arguing with it and just give the body what it needs without making up the story that it means that you're lazy or things are, you know, shouldn't be this way or shouldn't be that way. Oftentimes we stress ourselves even more with the meanings that we give to situations and events. Does that, does that make sense? Does that resonate for you guys? Um, I thought I'd share that because it's so often that I see this in my clients and I had a prime example with myself lately and, and when I stop resisting that, you know, I stop resisting the messages of my body and I stop resisting um, just giving it the rest that it needed to cope with the stress. Everything is a season. I was doing everything, meditating, exercising, yoga, you know, connecting with my sweetie on Zoom twice a day for the past four months. <laughs> We're kind of zoomed out. Um, but still my body was, was feeling the need to rest. And when we give it what it needs, the body just rewards us so much with great energy, accelerated healing, uh, strong immune system, strong muscles. Um, so let me know in the comments what resonates for you. And um, if you've been feeling stressed or anxious and um, you're looking for more ways, you know, to go deeper with this so that you can kind of cut it, cut the stress at the core, um, reach out to me. I have some amazing transformational exercises to um, disengage the stress reaction. Um, this is what I've been using with myself. It works really well. Um, and yeah, but stop arguing with your body. If it needs some rest, just nap. There's, it's, napping is so powerful. Sleeping more. Going to bed earlier at night to get a full night of sleep you know, closing down computer screens in the evening, at least two hours before you go to bed. It really helps with the production of melatonin. And um, yeah, good foods, exercising, yoga. But really, folks, stop arguing with the body when it needs rest. It'll, it'll give it a little bit of rest and it'll reward you tremendously with just, wow, energy and strength. That's what my body did. And you, you all know that I went through Lyme disease. So my my tolerance to stress uh, is not as high as it used to be before Lyme. So, well, I guess this is another point of my <laughs> video today, a little bit all over the place, but um, is that don't tolerate stress. It's, it's not healthy, right? It's not healthy to tolerate it, cope with it, make sure you're aware of all the sources of stress and um, yeah, give yourself the rest that your body needs. So for me, the stress and the reactions in my body is uh, a thermostat that tells me where my energy levels are at. And even though I consider myself in remission from Lyme disease for the past uh, two years, uh, the set points are still more sensitive than before Lyme disease. So this is kind of some of the gifts of Lyme for me. <laughs> 
All right, you guys, I hope this serves you. Um, I'll do a little uh, video in French uh, here in a little while. So thank you so much for being here, um, sending you so many good vibes, positive vibes of calm, of um, you know, aligned centeredness so that you can continue to go through this time with the greatest um, level of energy, both physically and emotionally. All right, I love you guys. Bye-bye for now.